video. He doesn't like to be filmed, but when he sees it's podcast time, he does like to come for a cuddle. Can you say hi to the people? Welcome to Wild Cottage. Uh, we are in the hills of County Clare in the west of Ireland. And um, this is the Wild Cottage Knitting Podcast. And I believe we are on episode eight, seven or eight. So you're very welcome here. Um, I'm thrilled so many people are coming back. New subscribers, new viewers. Oh, I'd love if you did subscribe. You're very welcome as well. I hope you enjoy it if you do enjoy it. You know, it's always a wonderful thing to give it a like, possibly a subscribe if you enjoy it and you'd like to see more. My name is Susan and I live here on our little small holding for nature with my partner Tom and our two dogs, Shep, who's a retired sheepdog and you probably saw at the beginning, and Mimi, who is a Labrador mix, we guess, because we found her in the forest um, as a puppy three years ago, right? Not too long after Christmas. So we can all guess what the story was there. We don't have any livestock here. We have an eight cow barn, but there's there's no cows. Um, and we, we garden, we do things for nature. We have a bat roost, a new bat roost for an endangered species of bat, plus just regular bats roost around as well. We have a polytunnel we garden there. You know, there's lots of, oop, himself is under the tripod. So he's, um, yeah, so there are pine martens and foxes. Sometimes there are badgers, not generally right around the cottage acre, which is good because we do a lot of gardening and badgers like vegetables and we have a polytunnel anyways. So, but this is the knitting and crafting podcast. But first off, we'll start with what I'm wearing. So yesterday was St. Patrick's Day or Patty's Day as, as we generally say over here in Ireland. And we, did a little parade up on top hill because of course we're in lockdown in Ireland and so you know yeah in that little Paddy's Day special I was showing you you know Irish yarns that were in green and then the dogs wore knitwear as, as did Tom and I in the parade and I didn't mention what this was now this is green all right but it's not an Irish yarn this is uh, the Ophelia shawl set two different skeins from Burrow and Soar and she's a dyer over in the UK and this was one of the first things that I knit and um, I really enjoyed it. I just did it as a, as you know, if you've watched the podcast before, I love a shawl and I love just a simple triangle shawl where you increase every other row. And um, yes, I see you, darling. I know, but I'm talking to the people. I'm talking to the people. Okay. You can, you can see his nose there. Um, anyways. And this chartreuse color is one of my favorites. I wanted to tell you about that yarn and I wanted to wear it because this is a newly finished object that I made out of the same chartreuse. Now the second colorway is from Eve Chambers Textiles and she is an Irish dyer. And this is, it's her um, BFL and silk. Uh, this is a test knit. So this is the second test knit I've ever done. And I'm gonna show you the first one in a minute cause that's also finished. But it is a test knit. So the designer is Sandra Conway, and she has not as yet, I think, named the pattern. It'll be released soon. She's told me I could talk there. about it. Though. It's to help you learn brioche. So it's like a, a be beginner type pattern for brioche. If you've watched this podcast before, you know that I'm only really, really knitting a bit over a year. And it, with the fibromyalgia, my brain gets tired and sometimes it takes me a while to grasp yeah, things. So I found it challenging in some ways, but much easier than I expected in others. And I think from a distance, it looks pretty good. But when you get close, because I did it in two color brioche, where I made mistakes, you can really notice it because it's, you know, like on the contrast color is coming through from the main color. But anyway, but I'm quite pleased with it, actually. I, I was the... The part that I found the hardest was when you had to start doing the um, decrease stitches for, you know, for the crown. And that was quite difficult, especially as it got smaller and just, yeah. So that's the part I found hard. But 
the actual brioche, regular knitting of the brioche, I picked that up fairly quickly. And I think the challenge is sometimes I'm challenged learning new so things. So I made a load of mistakes, which I knew I would do, <laughs> especially on the crown. Like it's, it's a, it's a holy show up in the crown. Like <laughs> it's such a mess, but I'm really pleased because I finished it. And I, I think I really finally, I got the grasp of the regular sort of brioche knit and the brioche pearl. And I started to be able to sort of read my knitting and understand how that worked. And if I made a mistake, how I might correct it. Um, so yeah, so I'm pleased about that. So I'll, sh I'll show you <laughs> a bit closer up. So of course this, uh, the chartreuse was my main color and you can probably see now the, the mess on the top. And then the BFL and silk, the bluey greens were my contrast color. So you can reverse. And from the one, there's one part of it the one side of it, it's a bit wrinkled because I had it on my head and I didn't block it, block it, although it's washed and dried. That part doesn't look too bad, but you know, if you start, you can see with, with the two color, when you've made a mistake like that, and at first, like I didn't notice, and then I wasn't sure how to correct it. And I just wanted to kind of learn the stitch and, and I was trying to correct it. And as you can see, a lot of times I made it worse anyway, but I just wanted to do the hat and learn as I went. So when I made some mistakes, oh, after a while I said, well, that's okay. You know, if I can keep going, I'll keep going. But where I really, really had problems <laughs> was the crown with decreasing. And you can just see the big dirty mess I made of it. So I'm going to do this pattern again at some point um, to practice, crown. but I wanted to get the thing done in time for the, the deadline, which is in just a couple days. And so that I could give feedback about the mechanics of the pattern. Um, so yeah, so I, I thought I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, continue on. Now I've done this and done that because, you know, it's, it's test knitting and it's a pattern for beginners, but it's not like a tutorial. Um, although she did make videos to help you, but it's not a class or a workshop. So I, I thought I'm just going to get a, go ahead and see how the pattern itself, you know, make sure there's no mistakes that, that are in the pattern. And of course that's a little bit challenging when you're a, a, a newbie because you don't always know, you don't know if something is wonky in the pattern or not. For example, I found one little thing that I, I was like, I think that she had done on the video, but didn't put in the written part of the pattern. So I asked her and she said, actually, yes, I, that is, you, you're right. I so didn't I felt like I was helpful in that way that I spotted that. And, um, because I don't think I was too <laughs> helpful in this way, <sighs> excuse me, but definitely, um, I'm really excited about having learned the basic brioche and there's one decrease that's so complicated like when I first was watching her video and and it was like you do this and then you do this and this and this and then you do this and this and this and this and I was like oh my god but you know I just watched that video about 20 times each time I came to that decrease I just did it with her you know I paused did that stitch paused did this stitch and by the time I was getting near the top of the, the very top of the crown, I had that complicated stitch pretty much memorized, but I was just kind of going back and checking because I didn't want to be having a brain fart and actually doing it incorrectly. But so most of these mistakes are where like I dropped a stitch and I didn't see it or, you know, something happened. And I was like, I, I don't actually know how to go back that and fit back and fix that because there's so many things going on in that decrease. So I just did a fix that, you know, I kind of figured out how to do, which is why it looks so messy um, that I just did so I could that, complete it. That is that finished object. And that is a hat by Sandra Conway and she is an Irish based designer and I'll link her information. The pattern's not out quite yet. So I'm going to just take this off now because the second finished object I have is another test knit and it is a lovely cowl. 
And this is a pattern called the Forest Floor Cowl, and it is by Gabby, the Knit Witch, a crafting podcast. And she's um, over in the US, and she was looking for testers to test this pattern. And you know, I chatted with her and I said, is it fairly simple? <laughs> and she said, yeah. So, and the pattern was super clear. It was really laid out well. I understood everything. There were a couple, one or two new things to me. So, yeah. So I'll put this, I'll put this on, and this is out of my Gideon yarns. It's the lovely um, Merino um, Minis DK that I got in my advent calendar from them. So it's, that's the Gideon yarns. And it's hundred percent superwash Merino. And I did just a sort of a little fade. And the way that the pattern is done you can make this, you can make the cowl a bit bigger than, than what I did. But because we're coming into sort of spring, I thought I won't make it too, too big. I like that it's nice and snug, so that'll really keep you warm. But you can continue on, like you, it has this nice little feature here, it has this split. So you can wear it, so you can wear it in different ways. And you can continue on and emphasize that split more and make it longer that way. But I decided not to because I knew I had the other test knit to be doing and I wanted to make sure I would finish this and finish that in time. So this was super easy. It was not a challenge <laughs> like brioche. So it was very welcome. And um, yeah, so I really, really enjoy this and it's quite snugly. You know, you can get it up here and do all this. And um, yeah, so really pleased with that. And that is the florist floor cowl cowl i have such a problem cowl this is the forest floor cowl by gabby gabrielle matthews and it'll be out soon i think she's going to release it about the 26th of march so and and i've made a few more things or i'm working on a few more things and i also got some items for the giveaway for the 1000 subscriber giveaway giveaway so we're, we're about as i record this we're about 770 so yeah it could be maybe just a few months away that we will do that giveaway and i got a few items for you guys and i'll talk about that too but i think i hadn't shown you the needle felted hearts i'd shown you some of them but i made a few more i've given a lot away to people who you know like have been in hospital or are in hospital and one for them and one or two or however many else for their loved ones just to kind of connect them while they can't be together and I have a few left and I'm doing this in collaboration with the other women at Irish Fiber Crafters and we're gathering to them together and they're going to be distributed locally nursing the local nursing home but I have a few other ones that I did here and left over that I haven't given away yet. So just they're just little needle felted hearts. Whoop, that's upside down. And just in my the way that I do, which is a soft, squishy style. And this is Irish wool and hand dyed by Sandra Marshall, I believe. And this is Galway wool. So the, the, the light pink is actually the Irish traditional breed Galway. And then this fuchsia is is um it's just wool that I had around that I probably got from World of Wool a while ago. And I just made a couple little plain ones. And I just like how they're soft and squishy. And the other women have made some really more elaborate, beautiful hearts. Like Sandra Marshall does amazing needle, needle felting. And um, Sandra crocheted. And Karen and then sewed things on to some of the needle felting. And they, oh, so yeah. So there's a lovely group of hearts getting ready to go to a local nursing home for people. So I've also been working on a lovely springtime cowl. cowl. <laughs> and so the yarn is Kaleidoscope from Benta at Arctic Crafts. And here's a little snowflake stitch marker. Ooh, she sent in with it. And I'm including a few stitch markers in the thousand euro giveaway. And her colorway is Kaleidoscope. So it's such lovely spring colors. And I really wanted to cast on a looser cowl for 
this time of year because they just look springy and Easter eggy. So I'm calling this my spring tide shawl. And I was hoping to have it done in time to for the Pisces season make along with uh, Kalisha of um, the Quirky Monday craft, craft cast. I'm not sure if I'll quite get it done, but anyhow, so this has been a lovely relaxing knit. I learned a new sort of slip over thing to make the holes there. And this is a free pattern and I've actually forgotten who it's by and the name of it. So I put it on the screen. I'm really sorry because Sheppy is bumping. He's laying right under the tripod, like I said. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Now you can see here, actually, my smaller cable was busy. <laughs> so I cast on in a bit bigger cable. And I think that's why, even though you know yourself, you're so careful and you look, but I managed to twist. I twist it when I joined. It doesn't matter because it's a cowl and it'll just have a twist in it. And sometimes that's a design feature. And I'd already, in one of the other podcasts, when I'd been having a sort of a really bad week and my brain was just doing all kinds of brain farts and I'd messed this up already and I had taken it off the needles and you know, I'd ripped it back. I'd frogged I'd it. Done it. I've done it over and I didn't want to do it again. I thought, you know, if it's twisted, that's fine. And again, um, it's in one of my absolute favorite little bags. Uh, it's by Nicolette, Nicole, Nikki of um, Fairy Realm Yarns, and she's on Etsy. And this is her lovely hand painted bag that she's done. And, you know, a lot of with the, these, the larger bags she has, you know, she gives you the DPN case and a little sachet of lavender, and it has pockets. And drawstrings are my favorite type of bag. I really love it and it's just so perfect for spring. So I was thinking that cow, my spring tide cow in the Easter egg colors are, is perfect in here. And the little lamb, the little lamb. Anyways, okay. So I've also been working on, ta-da! So again, remember that week when I just was just having such a brain fart and I had to unravel, I had to um, frog, which means rip back or unravel. Um, my cardigan that I was working on, my special Irish cardigan from Irish designer Carol Feller, and it's the Brock cardigan. And Brock means um, like speckled, like a speckled trout. And it's a very easy pattern for beginners. And I bought the whole shebang where you can buy her workshop, her class on it, and she's a great teacher. And so, I'm working along with that. So, but I had done, you know, a brain fart thing. So I thought I'll just start over and I set it aside for a while. Well, I've started it back and it's going really well this time. There have been no brain farts. So I want to show you. And this is in my beautiful fox bag that I got at the West Cork Yarn Festival. And um, isn't it gorgeous from a she's a quilter mainly I think and um, she made some beautiful quilted bags and again it has a pocket so the yarn that I'm using is Uruguay um, and the colorway is miel m-i-e-l which means honey in French and it is a very fat chunky singles so it's a bulky weight it's a superwash merino singles the colorway now it's looking a little bit more slightly more zingy than what it is in real life but it's pretty close to that and so it's a lovely foxy color and here I am so it's a top-down raglan cardigan it's knit it's knit flat and this is how far I am and the needles what is the needle size so it's a nine, knit on nine millimeter needles and I have it currently on, I believe it's a 40 inch cable. I think that's a hundred millimeters. And so this is where I am. I'm really, really pleased with it. And it has the lovely kind of lacy pattern in your decrease or increases. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm really excited. This will be the first garment ever that I've knitted. So quite pleased with that cardigan. And I'm also, so with my socks, if you've been watching, you've been seeing that I have been keeping along with the Rainbow Socks 
Chron Rainbow Sock Chronicles cow that So Sweet Violet is doing, and you knit a new pair of socks every month uh, according to the rainbow colors that um, they kind of have set out what each month is for the sort of like 10 months, and then you have two months free to choose whatever color you want to add in. And what I've been doing is that I've been knitting, so I'm a brand new sock knitter, so this the January was the first time I ever successfully finished socks and I had a big sock saga trying many things and I'll put a little eye if possible. Sometimes that eye doesn't work for me, probably because I only use the phone and tablet. But I'll put an eye to that podcast where I'm talking about that because I give you a lot of tips about um, what videos might be helpful for you learning socks on to knit socks online for free. And so I'll put that up there. So January was the first time and what I've been doing the past two months, I've done a combination of the super easy magic heel sock pattern by Judy Jewel, where you don't, you just, it's, it's just like magic and that you don't have to do all the fancy heel stuff. But I've also been combining that with a traditional kind of heel flap and gusset, which is a pattern that I followed along online with, with um, K, K, yeah, K Litton. The Crazy Sock Lady, her nine inch circular pattern, which is what I, after trial and error, I found that I really like nine inch circulars and that's what works for me. This time, this time for March's sock, I'm doing something different. So I uh, joined up, or I bought Mina, the knitting expat, her uh, sock club, Round the World in Eight Socks, because it's just such a great deal and I'll link to that as well. And she's in that sock club, the complexity of the sock gradually grows. So if you just know how to knit your basic vanilla sock, you will be able to knit sock one, which is the London sock. And the patterns get released each month for eight months. And I love this London sock. The pattern is so, so fun. It is so, so fun. So let me show you here. So this is sock one. And I'm just doing the pattern on the front and it's written so that you can just do the front or you just repeat the pattern for the back. Oops, I'm sorry about Jeffy is knocking. So here is, there we can see, do you see it's like paving. Isn't that lovely? It's really, really fun to knit. It is so fun to knit. And the yarn I'm using, so the top yarn is a sparkly mini from Fairy Realm Yarns. And then the second, the main body that I'm using is a, um, this is from Felt Fusion. And they're both on Etsy. And my second sock I have that I will do in slightly other colorways, different colorways, because what I'm doing is I'm using my minis up from, um, this, this is from uh, Felt Fusion's. Christmas advent set. So, but what I think I'm going to try to do I'm is gonna I'm going to use Mina's pattern for, you know, the foot, the front, but I'm going to do the heel. I'm going to do it as a magic, Judy Jewel's magic, magic heel sock, because that's quite easy. Now, I was chatting with another lady here in the comments of the last video where I compare the wear on the magic heel sock and the traditional heel sock and gusset. And I was talking about trying to, I had to tweak the way the magic heel sock was to, to fit my foot properly. I mean, I think that's what we all learn to do as we knit socks that we have to, you know, tweak things a little bit for, cause everyone's foot is that bit different. And I'm having to lengthen the heel section. And I found it really interesting because she also commented, she did as well. Um, so I would say if you're trying that pattern and you find it doesn't fit you quite right, play around with lengthening the heel section. So sock number two I knit of hers, of the magic heel pattern, I lengthened it and it was much better. But this time again, I think I'm gonna just add another half inch just to bring that heel up a bit more. So. So we'll see how we go with that. So that's going to be, it's going to fit quite well with this pattern because I can do, you know, the, the Mina's pattern on the front and then on the back, I can just do the magic heel thing and it won't be too taxing on my brain as a new sock knitter.
of course, in Mina's pattern, she gives you the heel and all. And she gives you a lot of information about how to knit the heel. And, and she has in the pack, she includes her vanilla sock pattern and how to, I think it's how to do German short rows. But this is what I'm going to try, partially because I also, it's, it's just easier and quicker for me. I find the hardest part, I like the heel flap and gusset, but for me, I think the very hardest part is picking up the stitches. It's just, yeah, it's, it's hard. <laughs> and sometimes it's harder than others. Well, I've only done two, and one time I found it, you know, awkward, but not too hard. And the second time, it just didn't get along with me very well at all. So anyways, <gasps> oh! Oh my, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Janie Mac. My goodness. You went nearly in the stream and you ended up going in the mud. But um, I've got the microphone everywhere. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> well, my phone nearly went right in the stream. So I've kind of shifted you a little bit. So you're not quite so close to the stream. I may fall in. I'm quite close to the stream, but... <laughs> That's okay. So what I've been working on, again, as you may know if you've been watching the podcast, is the plain triangle shawl out of the Zwartblas Ireland alpaca yarn. It's so soft. And this is a gift from my friend Susanna who owns the alpacas. And um, so I think the way you actually say Zwartbles is Zwartblas. But I've known Susanna for, I guess, over a decade now. And I've just always just started saying Zwartables, and so I say that a lot. So um, it's just because I've been saying it for so long. Anyways, but that's not actually the correct pronunciation. And um, yeah. So, so Zwartblas Ireland, and Zwartblas is the black sheep that she raises, but she also has black alpacas. And this is her anyway, yarn. But it's a beautiful soft yarn. And although she gets her sheep's wool spun here in Ireland in Gregnamana at the Cushendale Woolen Mill, they don't spin alpaca. Right. At the minute in Ireland, you have to kind of send it, generally have to send it to the UK. So it's not, this is not Irish spun, although her sheep's wool is. So I am just knitting the plain triangle shawl, like it's my, you know, very easy evening knitting. I'm increasing every other row and just doing a slip stitch slip stitch purlwise at the beginning of each row to just give it sort of a neater little you know selvage edge and the last time I showed you I was where this little the stitch marker is there and now now I'm up here and last time I showed you the really adorable little buttons that I got to match in case you know I have a button option on it so she can close it like this because I'm hoping to make it quite large and um, yeah the button is like is oven mitt the cat and this is in another beautiful bag from fairy realm yarns and this is her squirrel nutkin bag so it's another one that she's made and hand painted and there's squirrel nutkin and again it has pockets and it came with you know stitch markers and lavender and DPN case or needle case, whatever you want to use it for. So, yeah, I really enjoy those bags. Now, okay. now let's we'll talk, talk about, about the giveaway, the thousand subscriber giveaway. So, I've got a few new things in for that. I've had another offer of um, items that someone wants to gift, which is lovely. And I'll talk more about that later because she's kind of arranging something so I'll wait to talk about that when she has that ready and it's coming from the US so but I went to Irish Fiber Crafters picked up some yarns for you guys for the giveaway so I got two different yarns I got one from Babbles Yarns you all probably know Grace and she lives in County Limerick and she hand dyes yarn and this colorway is Millis, M-I-L-I-S is Millis, and that's an Irish word, word that means sweet. And so it's a lovely pinky colorway with some speckles. And it is a, a DK, the delicious D, her delicious DK base, which is the 75% New Zealand wool superwash and muesling free. 
and 25% nylon. So 100 grams there and it is 200 meters in that. So that will be a, a gift prize. I also picked up, again, this is another little Irish crafter. as a little sheep pin and she makes these. Let's focus. Oh, oh, I just did a thing. No, oh dear, nuts. So this is from Lizzie C and she is up in County Monaghan. And this is, I got this little sheep pin. It's a brooch. So it's a little brooch that you can pin on whatever you want. And I got a skein of the Belle Claire wool. And this is one of the very last, again, traditional Irish sheep breeds. So there's the Belle Claire. The, the Galway is probably the one where there are the most of this sheep left. Then there's the Belle Claire and there's also the Roscommon. The Belle Claire. And this is a fantastic rustic wool for color work or for, I mean, obviously it's not dyed, but at Irish Fiber Crafters, there are several skeins that have been dyed, naturally dyed that you can buy as well. But I just got the plain white. It's amazing for cables. So again, I'll try to do the eye, but if you want to go back to the Vlogmas where the episode where I say visit to a seaside village, well, we stop at Irish Fiber Crafters along the way and we do a little tour around this shop and the studio because it was allowed to be open at that point. And you'll see this stunning actual Irish, you know, Erin cable knit sweater, hand knit from Irish wool. And this is the She's wool. knitting a few more. The, she had two or three, I think, and they all sold and they are amazing. The stitch definition on that out of, with this wool is absolutely stunning. So this is a skein of that, this, that wool for you to try. And the skeins are like 14, 15 euros, 100 grams, like at the Irish Fiber Crafters. And we have 80 meters in it. So it's, um, that's an Aaron weight, I think. What does it say here? It's a medium, number four. That's something they do in the States. So, and it's not super wash or anything like that. So, so it's probably, yeah, like a worsted Aaron or worsted weight. Fabulous wool, really special history. And by, you know, by buying the traditional breed wool like this, this is all just small batch. And you're really supporting, not just the individuals that are, you know, making this, the farm that is, is making this, but, you're helping to grow that sheep breed. Good because quality yarns and special yarns, like buying these small yarns, just it helps so much when you can buy a breed specific yarn and especially when it's a it's an endangered breed like this. Uh oh. Okay, there is my phone telling me my battery is low, so I'll have to go inside and charge. Hi up. friends, so the battery ran out and I've had to come inside. I just want to show you um, some really beautiful orchids. I got at Lidl, so lovely, and close the podcast down. After this part, I'll have a little clip of um, maybe some of the window boxes outside and a little clip of um, Tom and the dogs, well, Mimi, singing together. So I hope you enjoy that. Also, I want to tell you, we were talking about the cables. And if you're interested, um, Alexandra at the November Woods podcast is doing a cable along for for kind of heirloom cable. So it's a cow. And I think it's called the Heirloom Cable Cow. And it's she's talking about it on her latest podcast. And I'll link that. And it's a year long cow. It's, it's a really good podcast. So watch that because she talks about people that if you're afraid of, why haven't you done a cow? Are you afraid? Do you think it looks chunky and unnatural or not unnatural, chunky and boxy on you? And she talks you through a lot of the things and gives you tips to help you do your cables. I'm not going to take part in that cow right now. Anyways, I've never done cables um, and I might at some point, but I really want to recommend it recommend that to you because you might be interested and now i'm going to just switch the camera around and show you this just one or two of these lovely orchids because you, you can see one behind me
<laughs> so the lighting is not great over here in the corner, but look at this orchid. And I got that at Lidl. They had a special and it was basically nine euros. And that's a more unusual type. And here's, I love my orchids now. And there's another type. Um, I think this is a Brescia and this one is, actually I have a little tag. Yeah, Brassia variety. And there's this one. And then I got that gorgeousness as well. So isn't that lovely? I just wanted to share that with you it's next week and I'll include a few more things on it, but I don't want to make this one be too long. So again, take care and um, happy crafting. Oh, They're singing together. I thought I'd better come out and try to video it. <laughs> Shep doesn't sing. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're so okay. Okay. I think you stop singing now. Yeah. We maybe we'll go for a walk instead. So lovely to see little pollinator. I can't. I'm looking through the camera. I don't want to get too close to it. Yeah, it's a hoverfly. I don't think it's a bumblebee, but I'm pretty sure it's just a hover. Not just, but a hoverfly. I love hoverflies. boxes. Yeah. I cut that one cabbage that was just going leggy and bolting. And I, I, I'm not surprised that this is happening, but she's found it in the compost bucket, well the bucket I'll take to the compost bin. And of course I would cut that up a bit first, but she's having a snack. And it's her very own treasures. She's actually eating the leaves, cabbage leaves. That's yummy. Yep. They enjoy the stalks in there too. But she's just having the leaves. She's pleased with herself found that treasure. <laughs>